All right, welcome back to Anton Math. Now, in this video, we're going to talk about a very important application of the dot product, and that application is calculating work. Now, first, let's talk about this word work a little bit. The common use of the word work, you know, when you say you have a lot of work to do, we use this to indicate the total amount or effort, uh, total amount of effort, sorry, total amount of effort required to perform a task. Now the mathematical definition of work follows very intuitively from this. We say that if a constant force of magnitude f moves an object through a distance d along a straight line, then the work done is w equals fd, or work equals force times distance. So what we're saying is the amount of work done is however much force is being constantly applied times the amount of time or distance that force has been applied. So we're taking the constant force and we're saying, well, how long were we doing this? How long did we have this constant force? And we call the total force exerted there the work. Okay. Now, there are a couple different measurement systems for work. Uh, we'll be dealing with foot pounds. So if the force F is measured in pounds, and the distance d is measured in feet, then we measure the feet in foot-pounds. So that's the amount of pounds per force for every foot traveled times the amount of feet that were traveled. That's how we indicate work. Uh, the SI unit of measurement for work is joules. So when you see joules, that's also work as well. But as I said here, we're going to be dealing with foot-pounds primarily. Now, for example, let's say we wanted to calculate the work done by lifting a five-pound weight four feet directly off the ground. So from our little formula up here, all we're doing is we have a five pound weight, that's my F. F is the force required to lift it. It's a five pounds of force required to move this weight. And I'm gonna multiply that by D, or the distance in feet that the weight has been moved. So here my work is simply my force, five pounds, times my distance, four feet, and we get my work is 20, foot pounds. Oops. Got that all on the wrong side. 20 foot pounds. All right, and that's it. Very simple. Now most of the problems that we do won't be so simple, and that's because notice that this formula here, this only applies if we're going in a straight line and our force is being applied in a straight line. So when we're lifting up the weight, the weight is traveling directly up and the force is being applied directly up. But what happens if the force is a little off? What happens if my force is actually being applied in this direction and there's maybe a wall here that the weight is being lifted against? Maybe you're pushing your body into the weight as you slide it against the wall. Well, not all of the force that you're applying to the weight is moving the weight up. Some of that force is being absorbed by the wall. So how do we calculate the actual amount of work that was done just to lift the weight, not the actual amount of force that was exerted in the entire process. Now to do this, we're gonna use the dot product. So we're gonna to have to derive it a little bit, talk a little bit about what's happening. So note, as I was saying, the formula W equals FD only applies if the force F is being applied in exactly the direction D. Now in general, if we have this force, and remember um, from before, we can model force with vectors, can't we? So if we have this force modeled by a vector, so we have the magnitude of that force and we have the direction of that force, and this force F moves an object from P to Q, then only the component of the force F in the direction of PQ, and we'll call this PQ vector D, affects the object. So let me go ahead and document this. Let me draw a little picture here. So let's say I'm moving an object from P to Q, but my force is being applied in a direction other than the vector from P to Q. So this is my point P, this is my point Q, so let's call this directional vector D. And let's say my force is up here, this is my force F. My force is still moving the point from P to Q, but not all of the magnitude of the force is being applied on that point. Some of that magnitude is going up into the air, and only this horizontal component, or remember we called that the component of F along D, this is the only 
This is the actual magnitude of the force being exerted upon the object to move it from the point Q to the point uh, D. The rest of that magnitude of force is up here maybe being absorbed by a wall or just unnecessarily pushing the object constantly upward or maybe to support the object, but it's not moving it from the point P to the point Q. So thus the effective magnitude of the force on the object is the component F along D. So that is if I have this angle theta, this is my angle between my force vector and my directional vector, then the magnitude of the force on the object is magnitude of F cosine theta. Remember this is just our formula for the component of F along D. Well that's going to give us a new formula for our work done when we have this indirect force. So we have that the work done is W, which is force times distance still, but now my actual effective force here, this is our component, this is the effective amount, uh, the effective magnitude of the force being applied in the correct direction D, and this magnitude of D, this is my distance, isn't it? So we're using magnitude in two different ways here. I'm using the magnitude of F to be the total magnitude of the force applied in the vector F, or in the direction of the vector F. I'm using D simply to be a vector that includes a distance, so the magnitude of D is our distance, and the direction of D is the direction in which we're traveling. So we're using two different vectors, but these two vectors are being modeled in a completely different way, aren't they? But let's do some simplification. We see this is my work. I can bring this magnitude of D out front, and we get magnitude of F, magnitude of D cosine theta. But remember, this is just our dot product theorem, isn't it? Magnitude of F, magnitude of D cosine theta is the same thing as F dot D. So we have this very simple formula for calculating the work done by a force F moving along a vector D. And it's that the work is F dot D. And that's it. This is a very easy way for us to now calculate the work of moving an object with indirect force. So let's see a couple, example, a couple of examples of this here. So let's say we're asked to find the work done by the force F, which is 4i minus 5j, in moving an object from P to Q. Now, in order to use my dot product, I need a distance vector. So my distance vector here, this is going to be my horizontal component is my change in the horizontal, so 3 minus 0. Remember this is way back when we started talking about vectors in component form. Remember this is my x2 minus x1 if we have a vector going between two points. So P here is my initial point, Q is my terminal point. So that means that my vertical component is negative 8 minus 0. So my directional vector D here is just going to be 3, negative 8. Now this one's fairly intuitive because my initial point was at 0, 0, so my directional vector should just be my terminal point here. So the total work done then is going to be equal to my vector f dotted with my vector d. Now vector f, I'll go ahead and write it in the same form as d here. We have it in a different component form. This is just 4, negative 5. So the dot product, taking my horizontal components, it's going to be 3 times 4 plus the product of my vertical components which is negative 8 times negative 5 and this is going to be 12 plus 40 or 58. Okay. Now we're not done yet, remember 58, oh actually we are done, <laughs> but typically we'll be talking about foot pounds. There wasn't any measurement given here. Um, but generally you'll be given a measurement. So we'll say that the force vector, that's that f amount of force in that vector was measured to be pounds. The magnitude is pounds in that direction. Okay, now let's take a look at a, a word problem. We're going to have to think a little bit here and set up the problem. A lawnmower is pushed a distance of 200 feet along a horizontal path by a constant force of 50 pounds. The handle of the lawnmower is held at an angle of 30 degrees from the horizontal, and we want to find the work done, the total work done pushing that lawnmower 200 feet. 
So let's go ahead and draw this out a little bit. We're going this distance. We'll say this is my distance vector d. And we have this lawnmower with a handle. We'll see if I can draw a lawnmower. We have a little box here, some wheels. We have this lawnmower being pushed a distance d by you know some guy. He's pushing this lawnmower, working hard on Sunday morning, mow his lawn. My distance d is 200 feet. I have a constant force of 50 pounds and the handle of the lawnmower is held at an angle of 30 degrees from the horizontal. Now this isn't, notice that I'm pushing in this way so my lawnmower vector is actually going down here. Um, so to see this in a way that we're used to seeing it, I'm going to go ahead and draw my D again, starting a little bit further back, but instead of looking at where the front of the lawnmower is going, I'm going to look at where the back of the handle is going. That way we can see that this 30 degrees here. Okay, now we know we have this relationship between these angles, 30 degrees and 30 degrees, right? I hope so. All right. Um, so now we see that this is the angle between the vectors. It's a bit easier to see it because the directions aren't going in the same way, but really it's just a different way of picturing it. The same thing's happening either way you draw it out. So we need to find the work done. Now to find the work, first we need to find the component form of the force vector and the component form of the distance vector. Now the distance vector is pretty easy. My distance vector d, that's just going to be 200i. Right? There's not much to it. Um, it's a horizontal path, so that means it's only going horizontally, and we'll say that it's moving in the positive direction with the way that we've drawn it. So this is my d vector here, down here, or here. They're just two different representatives of the same vector. Now my force vector, my force vector is going to be the magnitude of my force vector. We got to get this in component form. So magnitude of my force vector, cosine theta i, plus the magnitude of my force vector, sine theta j. All right, we got to get this in component form. So this is how we find it uh, when we're given the magnitude and the angle. Now, my magnitude of f is given to me by this 50 foot-pounds. So the magnitude of the force being applied is 50. So I have 50 cosine of 30 degrees i plus 50 sine of 30 degrees j. And let's go ahead and simplify this down. Cosine of 30 degrees we know is root 3 over 2. Sine of 30 degrees is just one half. So my force vector in component form then is going to be, oh, dividing by 2, I have 25 root 3 i, that's my horizontal component, plus 25 j. Now we know only this 25 root 3 i is actually going to be the force applied to pushing that lawnmower on this 200 foot path. This 25j, that's being absorbed by the ground. Um, that's my vertical force being applied. But we'll see when we do the dot product, this just kind of disappears anyway because of the way that d is here. So my total work done is the dot product of f and d. Now that we have f and d in component form, we're ready to finish this problem up. Now the dot product of f and d, I need to take the product of the horizontal components. So my horizontal component for d was 200 and for f was 25 root 3. So we'll say this is 25 root 3 times 200 plus, now the product of my vertical components, I have 25 from f and from d, my vertical component is 0, isn't it? D is just 200i, but what we didn't write here is, of course, we have plus 0j if we want to write that in there. Uh, that's what we have when there's no j's present. That means that we have 0j's, so my vertical component is 0. And we just get 25 times 200, which is the same as, sorry, 25 root 3 times 200, of course, of course. 
uh, which is the same as 5,000 root 3, and we need our unit of measurement, which is foot-pounds. Okay. Now, if you wanted to approximate this, this of course is, is fine for an answer, but if you want to approximate this into feet, um, you know, say you're working on a problem and you need actual feet, you don't want that root 3 in there, plugging that into your calculator gives you about 8,660.25 foot-pounds. All right, and that's it. That's how we calculate work. And that's going to end all of the work we're doing in this course on vectors. So our next videos are going to start dealing with our, con our conics sections. That's graphing and recognizing parabolas, ellipses, and hyperbolas. And we'll see you there.